This is like my third time recording this video. So it's 2023. It is time for you to make a brand new Discord server. Maybe this is your very first server. Maybe you have an old server that's dead and you want to start over again. Either way, in this video, as fast as possible, we're gonna create a server. We're gonna set up uh, categories. We're gonna set up roles. We're gonna create channels. We're gonna make it look good, easy to navigate with some aesthetics. We're even gonna create a profile picture and some panels to make the server stand out even more aesthetic wise. Once again, we're gonna be going as fast as possible. So slow down the video if you have to. This video is sponsored by the oxygen that I'm breathing. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is an example server that I created uh, yesterday, basically. And this is the type of aesthetic that you can expect from this video, basically. Everything is color coded. Everything is very visible. Everything has an emoji. This is another server that I'm working on right now. It's actually my, my um, private server. And this is what the aesthetic looks like. We're gonna be doing all of that good stuff, okay? Okay, so step one, create a server. First thing you want to do is go to your left here and click add server. It's gonna ask you if you wanna create your own, click create my own. And then for now, we're gonna click for me and my friends and we are going to name it. If you are an influencer, if you're a content creator, you want to put your name in the server, right? It's gonna be recognizable. For the profile picture, You, if you show your face, if you have a logo, those are the things you need to show. Don't put some random galaxy thing and call it something random. It's gonna blend in with every other server that people are on. They're gonna have a hard time finding it. If you're trying to just make a community server, you can find a cool name and call it whatever you want. One of the examples that I used was the arcade and we're gonna have a couple of things that are gonna be arcade themed or retro gaming themed. We're gonna make the profile picture a little bit later. Boom, create. Congratulations, you actually created a brand new server. Now, automatically you're gonna have text channels as a category and voice channels as a category. We're gonna change all of that. So first thing you want to do is edit that text channel category and think about all the categories that you want. I'm gonna edit this one, edit category, and here I can put whatever I want. So. Since categories and channels are different, basically you'll find a channel within a category. You kind of want the aesthetic to be very visible so that they don't blend in with the channels, right? This is why in this server here, what I ended up doing is having those uh, squares basically determine, hey, that's a category. Inside of the category, you're gonna find channels, right? Very visible, very clean. In this server, for example, the distinction was that, oh, uh, categories are just one emoji and then full caps, and then the channels would be emoji, this dot, and then the name of the channel with some spaces. By the way, that's something that you're not supposed to be able to do, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. Anyway, so edit that first text channel and we're gonna start with the, the categories, basically. Usually on top, we're gonna have some sort of welcome category. We can call it welcome. You can press Windows plus period in order to have an emoji menu. If you're on a Mac, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and we can scroll down the emojis and pick some sort of distinctions. Instead of going with squares, let's go with uh, those round ones. Another thing you can do is use websites like this one, for example. Honestly, you type like Discord symbols on Google, you're gonna find a bunch of websites. This is just one of them where you can actually click and copy stuff to just add to the aesthetic of the server. For example, you can see here those type of text and stuff. That could be your categories. Just remember to test those things on mobiles because certain characters will just not show up on mobile. I don't personally like going too wild with it. So let's uh, let's just copy this one or maybe that one. Go back to Discord, paste. I don't like it. All right, save changes. Nice. This is what it looks like. And now all you have to do is just continue creating categories. You can right click here where it's empty, create category, or you can just mod modify the ones that are already there. All right, gonna create all of them and then we'll be back. All right, so we created all of our categories. Here we have welcome. General is where you're gonna have most of your channels. Games is for several bots that your members will be able to play games with. And also we're gonna add like an Epic Store game that will tell you games that are free. Machine is for people who want to level up. Basically it's the bot spam channel. That's where people can interact with bots. And also we're gonna have a private channel in there where the bot will tell us every activity going on in the server, such as whatever the mods are doing in the server. For example, if someone leaves the server or if the mods ban, someone, it will all be logged in there. VIP is for our VIP members and then voice is going to be for voice chat. Right next to each category, you're going to see a plus and that is the create channel. When you click create channel, it asks you if you want it to be a text channel or a voice channel. This is where you choose basically. And then you give it a name and then you create the channel. I usually create one channel and I duplicate said channel to go faster. Under the first category, we already have a channel, a text channel called general. We're just going to modify it. Right click, edit channel. And this is going to be our rules channel. And this is where we kind of want to decide on the aesthetic of the channels. Considering how the categories are displayed, we actually want them to be a little far to the right. 
keep them simple, use short words. So we found an emoji. This is the same thing that we copied earlier. And this is what I'm going to show you. Basically, if you want to have different fonts, you can go to a website like fsymbols.com. There's also cool text generator. I think if you type that in Google, you'll find it. It's basically those websites where you can type something and then it will uh, allow you to copy another way. And for example, uh, full caps is something that you're not allowed to do in text channels in Discord. But here, if I copy this, for example, or actually I want the actual name, this to be called lobby. Boom. And I paste it here. Now I have a full caps text channel. Okay. The website we used earlier actually also has something that is very special. It is an invisible character right here. If you click copy invisible character and you go back to discord, let's go back to editing this. We can actually add spaces in between those. Which is pretty cool. The thing is it adds one, two, three spaces. And now I can select this copy and just replace stuff with actual spaces. So your lobby is really going to stand out. Let me add one before that and see how that looks. Nice. Now keep in mind that there's a limit here. So we're going to have to be very careful with the length of the names of our channel. And I just realized this is not a lobby. This is supposed to be the rules channel. There we go. We have our rules channel and right click and duplicate. And this is where you can create another channel. In this case, it's going to be for events, windows period. You can actually type what you're looking for. Megaphone. All right, not bad. Now we're going to do the same thing for the rest. I'm going to delete that voice channel that is in general because we don't need it. And we're going to add a text one. Okay, so just like that, we have all of our channels. We have under welcome, we have rules, events. Under general, we have chat, memes, picks, vids, games, music. Under games, we have Pokemon. I'm gonna show you which bot will allow you to play Pokemon. Uh, we have trivia, I'm gonna show you a trivia bot. And then free, which is the free Epic Game Store's games. Machine is gonna be levels for people who are trying to level up by typing and being active in the server. Music is to type commands for the music bot. I'm gonna show you which one. Logs is for moderators only. VIP, we have one VIP text channel, one VIP voice channel. Then under voice, we have lounge just to chit chat games to play video games together theater in order to stream whatever you want to stream afk if you are just afk all right so the next step is to take care of roles we're going to click up top we're going to go to server settings and we're going to go to roles in our server we don't want the at everyone role to have any rights at all we want them to only be able to read the rules which we're going to set up later so we're going to click here and we're going to click clear permissions that means that they have nothing zero permission save changes click on back and then click Roll. Let's create some roles. Bottom here, it created a new role. Click edit. And we know we're going to have some mods. I'm just going to put mod and we're going to pick a color. I like going with light colors like this. That's pretty nice. Under permission, you can pick what they can do. Now they can view the channels. They're going to be moderators. If they're going to be like big moderators that really, really want to take care of the channel, anything that says manage, basically you want to give that to them. So they can add emojis, web hooks. You may not want them to manage the server, like change the region and change the server name. That's completely fine. If you want them to create invites, change people's next name, nicknames, kick members, ban, and then send message, of course, all of that good stuff. Basically give them everything except for administrator. Go back, create another role. And per the channels, we know we're gonna have some VIPs. Nice, permission, and then you decide what they can do. So we want them to view channel. We don't want them to manage anything. They can invite people if they want, send messages, create threads. I don't want them to be mentioning at everyone. Create a new role. This one we're gonna call regular. And this is for someone who's already established there. We want them to basically view the channels and then be able to send stuff in the channels. Create another one and we're gonna call this one newbie. That's for people who just joined. They read the rules, but they're not a regular yet. With this one, you can be a little more restrictive. You can be like, okay, they can't use external emojis or stickers. They can't create invites because they just got in. They can post links, but the link will not generate the thumbnail. You can make it so that they can't live stream, for example. And then we're gonna create one more and that is going to be the bot role. And in this one, we kind of want to give it pretty much all the permissions, maybe not manage server. And we're also going to give it administrator. Save changes. There you go. You have a bunch of roles. Now, next step is to go by category. Basically, when you change the roles, the permissions for categories, for example, edit categories, permissions, it's going to sync up every channel that is underneath it. 
unless you have some exceptions for example the rules you might have some exceptions that you're not going to have for events but usually those two channels here you don't want people to be able to type in them you're the only one who can type in them right so under the welcome i'm going to go to edit category click permission we want everyone to actually be able to view this channel we want them to read the message history boom and then for each role we want to make sure that they cannot send messages in there except for the mods and the bots so vip should automatically be able to see it what we want to make sure is that they can't send messages nor create threads same thing for regular and newbie all right save changes and if you want to test out basically if it's working you can go to server settings roles click on whatever role for example newbie scroll down click view server as role now you're viewing the server as the newbie role right right there and as you can see it says you do not have permission to send messages in this channel that means you did it right you can uncheck this to view it as everyone as you can see everyone can only see um, roles and events and they cannot send messages in them but a mod will be able to send messages and we'll see we'll have access to the whole server all right keeping that method in time basically you're gonna go to each categories and you're gonna set your role permissions if you have to set role permissions for a specific channel for example you want people to be able to use the levels the music but not the logs you can right click on it and then edit channel and then permissions and this one will just not be synced with the category as it is right now all right i'm gonna do all that and i'll be right back all right so this is pretty much our server with everything collapsed here and we have all of our permissions per category including our logs here you're gonna see that little thing basically you can right click edit channel permission and you can click on private channel and then you can add which members or roles you want to have access to that channel okay that's the vip vip chit chat not everyone can join voice is limited and then we have the voice channels everything seems to be good let's set up that afk channel real quick we're gonna go to service settings and right here in overview we're gonna go to inactive channel and we're gonna find the afk one so if you're inactive for a while basically you can set it up so that it sends you to that channel another thing that's important here is system message channel if anyone joins basically it'll send a message in a channel i actually don't like that in my servers because i have bots that do that for me so i'm going to turn that off completely if you want to create a separate channel for that you can do that too and then just set it up right here that being said though certain things like send a message when someone boosts the server i think it's good for you to be aware but i i personally like when it's just in general chat or you can put it in that logs channel since this is basically your channel to keep an eye on what's happening in the server anyways so let's do that save changes and we're good okay so for the bots you usually want moderation and then you want things like reaction roles you want a bot that can do pretty much everything i like using call bots because it's a bot that allows you to do things like reaction roles which is something that we already have our server basically prepared to do so if you go to call.gg you click add to server it's going to ask you which server do you want to add it to and you can click the server that you want it's going to go through the setup it's very intuitive one thing that you do need to know one big tip since we created a bot role is that we need to uncheck a bunch of boxes when we're adding it because otherwise it will create its own role and then you won't be able to manage that click continue and there you go you want to turn off everything and then click authorize as soon as it joins your server once you confirm here before you click get started, you want to go back to your Discord and you're going to go find Carl Bot right there. You want to right click on his name and go to roles and bot. Boom. OK, now it should have permission to do everything. Click get started. And then again, we're going to have a setup here. So there you go. If you want to welcome, if you want to welcome people, you can set that up here. You can set all of that later. I'm just going to click next. If you want reaction role templates, that's something that you can choose here. We're going to have our own custom reaction role. Mute role, we're not going to pick that. Which channel should mod logs be posted in? We have a specific channel for that. It's the logs channel. There you go. Automatic moderation. You can set that up if you want. I'm not going to. I prefer Dinobot for moderation, but that's really up to you. Invite Piggy to server. No, click skip and go to dashboard. There you go. And basically, you have all of this option, all of those options uh, that this bot can do on your server. Keep in mind, though, that some things are premium reaction roles. We're actually going to set that up later, but I want to show you that post embed. It's going to post something and you can select which channel you want it to post it in. Usually rules. That's the only channel that um, the at everyone role people without roles, basically. And then you can put something like uh, react. Click the react emoji. If you read the rules, you can add which emoji they can choose. 
I like the check mark. And then under the emoji, what you want to do is actually select the role that you want people to get. So usually people will get the newbie role, right? You can add more emojis for different roles, but um, that's all we need. We're going to click create and it's going to create it in our uh, server. So let's go back and under rules, we're going to see all of that. Now, one thing that I messed up here on purpose is to show you a lesson about the roles is that they actually have an order. So here I created the bot last, so it actually has less priority than the other one. So we need to bring that all the way up. There we go. Click save changes. And now it will be able to actually give people permissions or roles. Actually, I can go ahead and delete that. OK, when it comes to more bots, it's something that you have to pick and choose. We all know that we created those uh, channels here, Pokemon, Trivia, and then the free Epic Games. I'm going to show you which bots they are, so, and I'm going to put the links in the description, and you can go ahead and play around with them. So for the Pokemon bot, it's poke2.net, and you can just invite it. You really have to kind of learn the documentation because sometimes it will spam stuff in channels that you don't want to. You need to learn how to restrict it a little bit. For the music bot, I love using BMO because it works really. And basically, you can type, hey, play this song, and it will join the voice chat that you're in and start playing it which is pretty cool you can have playlists you can skip you can do everything like a normal music bot basically preview bot is what i use i used to use at least it's pretty cool it has a bunch of options same thing you can just put it in that trivia channel people can just play around with it or you can do like event nights um, and then epicfreegames.net is the bot that will tell you every time epic games or the epic store has free games and which games they are now the last thing that we have to do is uh the logo and then the what i call the headers right so for the logo i'm gonna open up photoshop real quick and i'm gonna do something let's say 800 by 800 that's fine again if you're an influencer if you're a content creator use your face use your logo use something use a face at least try to stand to stand out a lot of uh streamers use their emotes unfortunately if you join a bunch of streamer stuff all the emotes end up looking the same it's it doesn't stand out you know what to make it more accessible i'm going to use photopia.com uh, i'm going to click 800 by 800 i'm going to click create let's go back click hold ellipse hold shift duplicate it's the same thing as photoshop really except you press ctrl alt t instead of ctrl t all right, we're going to click on the text tool and click once. We're going to type a for like arcade. Nice. We're going to select that. Oh, wait, it's putting it inside my circle. Let's delete that. Make sure we don't have the circle selected. Click once. There you go. Click a select that a and bump up the size by clicking on the word size. I want it to be on top of everything else. Click on the move tool. All right, that's not bad. Control Alt T, make it bigger. And basically that's what I want. And I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard to create a clipping mask in between the two first layers. Nice. We can see that little arrow there and then boom, there you go. Now they are confined to that one specific, which is the bottom one. I'm going to hold Alt, duplicate the A, double click on it and change the color. Click OK, move tool, control Alt T, control minus to zoom out. And I'm going to reduce it like that. OK, press enter, go to effects, go to stroke. You're looking at the results, bump that up. OK, not bad. And then let's go to outer glow, turn that on. Color, we want that to be a bluish. In the mode, we want it to be linear dodge. The size, we want to bump it up until it's visible. There we go. Okay, blue doesn't seem to be working, so let's go back. Well, let's try out a couple of colors. Actually, blue is not that bad. That's pretty rad. Okay, All right. Lower the opacity a little bit and then add a drop shadow. Like I said, drop shadow. We want it to be a uh, linear burn. I really don't like the look of it. Uh, turn off the stroke. That looks a little bit better. Let me play with the outer glow color a little bit more. Yeah, I think purple. <laughs> purple looks a little bit better, chat. What do you think? Or maybe it's the yellow. In underneath that I just don't like. There you go. I like that. I want to duplicate that bottom A, hold Alt to drag down this time. I want to control Alt T, Photopia to transform. I want to bring that up like a lot around here. Press enter and we have our logo basically. Let's turn that off right here. Never mind. Let's export this and just get <laughs> get done with it. OK, so we're going to go to file, export as PNG, save. And we're going to save it. But logo and save now in discord we're gonna go to server settings click on change icon here find it where we saved it click save 
All right, so this is our color scheme now. We have black, white, orange, and purple, and a gradient between purple and orange. So when it comes to things like headers, it's basically little images that you can add within your text to make things look better. Let's go back to Photopea and actually open a new file. Okay, new. This one, we're gonna make it a thousand by something like 300. Click create, see what that looks like. That's actually pretty good. I'm gonna click on that little lock here on the background so I can turn it off if I want to. But one thing that's very important is that I need to go back to my old project and I need to save that logo or just drag the image and drop it. I can press Control A to select the whole canvas, Control Shift C to copy everything that is within that selection and Control V. Okay, we pasted it in. Control Alt T. Let's drag that down and let's place our logo right here. Nice. And now we can place some text. Click on T, click once. And this is where you're gonna have things like rules. Double click on the T here to select all that and bring that down or just drop down here and bring it down right there. There you go. Click the move tool, move it around. You can also control Alt T. I'm gonna double click on the T. I'm actually gonna have this called welcome so I can kind of gauge the size that I want. Control T again. And I want this to be in the middle here. Okay, that's nice. And if you want, you can actually add a background. I'm gonna click on the background here and I'm gonna go to my shape tool. I'm gonna go to rectangle. Up there, I'm gonna have, uh, I don't know, 50 pixels of rounded corner and I can actually create a background. I'm gonna press Control A to select everything and with the move tool selected, I can center horizontally and vertically. Nice. Let's make that background a darker gray. And then for the welcome, I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna click effects. I'm gonna add a gradient overlay. Click on the gradient and we're gonna give it the colors, right? So our colors were orange. Double click on that, the white one here and purple. Nice, click OK. The scale, I want that to be super wide and I want the angle to be a little bit different. What you can also do is click and drag, I believe. There you go. So you can place the gradient wherever you want. Not a huge fan of the color in the middle here. It's kind of muddy. I want to try to add something like a blue. Just click here in the middle, double click and find a color that transitions a little bit better. This red is pretty good. Reminds me, that's pretty much literally the Instagram color scheme. <laughs> Not bad. Click OK, and now you can play a little bit more with the scale if you want to, but I think that looks dope. I would actually want the logo to have more of that, but that doesn't matter. You can add some extra decorations if you want. I'm going to create a new layer on top of that background. I'm going to make it into a clipping mask. Showed you how to do that already. With the brush tool, I'm just going to add some random brush strokes. Nice, and I'm going to lower the opacity all the way down. Cool. Now the advantage with this is that you can click file, export as PNG. You can create a new folder if you want, but I'm just gonna have this be welcome. Save, double click on the T. I'm gonna call this one rules. Same thing, file, export as PNG, save. Uh, this one can be about the roles to explain people, okay, here are the roles we have and what they do, roles, and whatever else you wanna put in that roles channel. So I advise you have your text ready. I'm actually gonna delete that reaction thing because we want that to be at the bottom. So people should be able to read first. We're gonna double click on the plus here. We're gonna add welcome, okay? So if you already have your text, it's gonna be like, I'm gonna post this, so it's gonna be welcome. And then we can add the rules, right? And then for the rules that, by the way, the way I typed back to back is shift space. You can type something, shift space and type like that. So you can add like a paragraph and return to line basically. And for roles, you can type add, and then you can just list all the roles, mods. So there's better ways of doing this through what is called embed, but I'm probably gonna make a separate tutorial on that. This is like an easy way to get this done and have it sealed there. And then at the end, you can ask Carbot to post that reaction thing. We're gonna delete the one that we have. We're gonna create a new one. If you read and agree with all the rules, click on the check mark, boom, create. And there it is. So if people want to actually come here and get a role and have access to the server, they kind of have to go through here. One thing I probably did, I did I say that in the beginning is I'm going to create this as a server template. I'm going to go here, server settings and server template. I'm going to create it as a template. I'm going to name it and I'm going to put a link in the description so that you don't have to do all the things that I just did. If you like the way that I set up my server, it's not going to copy the bot. It's not going to copy the messages, but it's going to give you all that structures, the, the channels, the 
roles in the structure of the of the server in general so you can have that as a starting block if you want to change the whole aesthetic you're gonna have to go channel by channel good luck or you can start from scratch because i just taught you how to do all of that Okay, in total, doing this very simplified version of a server took me about one hour. For your own server, you usually want to take a little bit more than that. I'd say two hours, maybe three hours if you really know what you're doing. If you're brand new to it, you know, you want to spread it out, you know, take a week, get some people in to actually test the server. I just realized you can't even see all the things that I typed here. Uh, get people to actually test the server, get your friends to come in, try different roles, try giving them different roles and, and let them test what they can do and what they can't do. Like, hey, can you see that channel? Can you join that voice chat? And stuff like that, right? You're gonna make mistakes no matter what happens. You're gonna have some troubles with some bots. I know I had problems with the po Pokemon bot. It was posting in every single channel and that was annoying. I tried to restrict it to one channel. I finally found a solution, which I don't even remember. Creating good Discord servers is a kind of a tedious thing to do, but once it's once it's going, once you get it going, we have the basics, everything I showed you here. Basically, you're gonna have some feedback from the people that are using it, and you're gonna have to adjust little things here and there until the server is running smoothly. So hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you wanna learn more about Discord, I have a whole playlist. And um, yeah, also follow me on Twitch because I stream there. And if you want more Discord tutorials, please leave that in the comment section below so I can know to make more. If you have specific things you wanna learn too, just let me know exactly what they are and I'll look into them. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Go out there, make me proud, get level, out.